Index Card a Day 2017 with Creative Katie. That's me. This is card number 11 and I've titled it Just Start. I'm going off prompt for this one. Tetrahedron just didn't speak to me. Links to any supplies can be found in the description box. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and choose to be notified of upcoming videos. So I have a gessoed card and I am going to try, I'm not sure what the technique is called, it's kind of a blocking technique where you put color down much like what you would have on a jelly print and then you white out or black out or color out the areas around whatever shape. Now often I do this with stencils and with black but I rarely do it with white or any other color and I'm seeing other people do this and I'm liking it. So when I start I'm deciding that I want some texture on there before I put color and I'm thinking that I'm going to use those masks that you see there that are holding the space. I didn't want at that time the texture to go where I was going to be placing these. So that's why you saw me have them there while I put the texture paste around them. None of that's going to matter. So I'm adding some colors and I've got light magenta and red violet and light blue permanent and other colors all in that tone and I'm just rubbing it in and mixing it and blending it till I like what I see. When you're mixing acrylics and you, you like what you see or you're getting kind of mud and you're getting it all one tone and that may not be what you want, that's when you need to bring up the dryer and dry your page. You can always layer more paint on and with acrylic it's permanent underneath and once it's dry it's not going to mix. So you're more likely to be able to get the various colors that you want. So the goal here is to come up with a page or background that is fully colored and has lots of texture, visual, physical, um, some pattern that you are going to um, use later on. So I'd use this Tim Holtz stencil to put the texture paste through and now I'm just stenciling on in the same colors that were in the background and this is a trick that I tend to tend to use a lot. I find it leads to a very cohesive background where you're not introducing more colors you're playing with what you've already established. So I'm going horizontally and vertically with this and I'm switching the colors. I'm using the dark purple and the light pink and just adding interest. Now I'm going in with some of this light blue. So basically we're going to get a fully colored page full of interest that we are going to then isolate part of it. Often I've seen this with pods and then they white out everything around the pod. So I'm just using some white acrylic and a bottle cap here from one of my sprays I believe. And based on the page, that may have been a little too big. When you're using, working on such a small surface, it's really difficult. Now you could do the same thing on just a piece of paper and develop all these layers in interest and then use it as you would a jelly print. Then I decide I need some black. Black and white provide that great contrast with whatever color you have in the background. And this is just a little heart stamp that I'm stamping with acrylic paint. I'm 
mainly I wasn't so interested in the heart. I was more interested in just getting that little pop of black to show up. So I attempt to use these right now and as you see, you'll see, I don't get a distinct enough print with them. They're a little finely cut. I'm just putting a little piece of tape underneath it so that it stays put. So when you're deciding what you're going to use them as a mask, you can cut any shape you want. You can use silhouettes of people, you can use silhouettes of birds, uh, different animals. Anything you want really works, but you need something that has a big open space because what you're going to see is all that luscious, colorful paper background that you've created where you are whiting out everything. So. Now we're going back to square one. That kind of didn't work very well, so I quickly got out a baby wipe and cleaned it up. Now I'm deciding to add a little bit of white splatter. And I'm thinking, okay, now what am I going to, to use? And I think obviously I decide I'm going to put some, some other colors in here because there's not enough. This is kind of where you throw everything at it but the kitchen sink. Now this background right now I could slap a focal point on it and finish it around that focal point, put a, put a quote, and that could be, I could use it simply as a background. But I'm determined to give this technique a try and if you know which technique I'm talking about and if you know what its name is let me know uh, you know so I decide I'm going to even add more and I've got some little bit of metallic here that I'm putting through some punchinella A friend of mine does wonderful canvases using this process and she's done dogs and elephants and um, a whole variety of, of things and they all turn out so spectacular so I just kind of uh, wanted to give it a try because I absolutely love what she's been creating. I'm just using up some leftover paint and just adding and these pieces that I'm cleaning paint off on you're probably going to see them at some later date so I'm thinking maybe I'm gonna go do some butterflies but I peeked and there's a quote called wings coming up so I decide not so I'm gonna go with just some hearts and I just cut out some hearts out of paper and I'm arranging it on here and I'm going to outline it with my Stabilo white. You could use chalk which will come off or watercolor pencil. Um, it's just so you can see it so you know where to paint around the shape. just playing with the composition. My goal here is to have enough of this luscious background coming through. So I want enough of these hearts and shapes on here to, you know, really honor this background because it's just about going to kill me to take some white paint in a moment and cover up everything that isn't the heart. So I just grabbed my Dilutions White. You could use white gesso, you could use white acrylic, you could use another, any color you want. I really wanted to keep this white because that's 
I see people's projects and I want to keep it. And so you have the contrasts of these bright, vivid colors in this background that are now going to be framed with this white. And then now that the background has become the focal point. These hearts are the focal point. So I'm just using a small brush to, you know, go through this. And I know that I'm going to in all likelihood have to put more than one coat. Now again, if you're going to leave it white, you have an option of what effect you want. I've seen where people have put one layer of white that's fairly light, but then you can see some of the pattern behind. And that's really interesting. So that's up to you. So looking at the video right now, I am really liking the white around this. And you can probably tell that's not where I left it. So again, there's a, here's a point where I could just outline the hearts and be done with this, you know, edge, edge the card and I'm done. So again, when you are doing a card like this, using this process, you get to decide at which stage you are done. So I am adding another layer of white. And you can see how the texture shows and some of the stamping I did with the caps, the bottle cap show. And if you get some on the heart where you, you don't need it, you've got a few seconds to, to grab a baby wipe and get that off. So I've decided that I'm going, not sure what I want to do now. This is where the indecision came in. So I grabbed my Prussian blue and I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to outline or shade using the um, floating technique with, with acrylics around the hearts. And I try the Prussian blue and I don't like it. Then I grab the dioxazine purple and I like that better. So I'm just using that technique of floating. And I'll put a link to the video where I, the technique tag video where I talk about that technique and about shading in greater depth if you are interested in um, learning more. I, a lot of people ask, you know, they post things and they say, you know, what am I missing? What am I, you know, I don't think it's done. It's missing something. And more times than not, it's the shading. It's the outlining, something along those lines. It's something in the finishing that takes it from okay to wow. In doing this part, I was hoping that maybe I was going to leave it white. And right now, I could have just edged it kind of in that purpley blue color and been done. But you know what? I didn't. So I go to the light blue that I used in the creation of the colorful background, and I'm just putting it in. I make the decision that I'm not going to leave it white. So I'm just filling in around. You would need, even when you decide to add color, you would need to either put gesso or the white acrylic over top of all that pattern that you'd created anyways, so that you get um, a nice clear. So this is all right. And again, I'm liking it as it is. It's interesting when you videotape it and you look at it after the fact, how many times it's like, oh, I don't know why I thought I didn't like this. This is looking really good.
Now I had that Prussian blue from earlier that I was going to edge the hearts in and I'm really thinning it out with a lot of water. I just want a wash of that color just to darken this just a tad more. I don't see enough, enough, enough depth or interest in it for some reason. But this is just really, really liquidy. And I want to keep it very wet. Now I don't want it solid Prussian blue, which is why I've added so much water to it. I want to just kind of build up the, the layers and the interest. So right now, off camera, I am looking for my plastic wrap. And I just bunched it up in a ball and I'm just stamping into this and I'm giving the black background some texture. So the Prussian blue is darker on top of that light blue permanent and it's just adding a little bit more texture to the background. And I'm just giving it a dry, cleaning up, kind of multitasking here a little bit. Now you could have, you know, and most times that's what you've seen me do, is you create the background and then you glue a jelly print that has this colorful, beautiful paper on it, and you will end up with a similar looking card. But this is just another way of getting it. So I've gone around the edge with a Stabilo all pencil, and I decided that I want a little bit more contrast around the heart, so I'm just using the Stabilo around the hearts, just a little bit of black. Oh, to make these hearts really pop off the page. And I think the black does that. If you don't have a Stabilo, you can use a watercolor crayon, you can use charcoal and smudge, you could use um, Neocolor 2s, Distress crayons would also work. So there's a variety of things. You don't need to have that, just that one specific. And I'm just fussing with it until I like what I see. I could have added some um, little of Uniball Signo White just for a little bit of um, highlights. And I decided instead of just rubbing the Stabilo in, I want to activate it just a little bit more. So this has been a pretty neutral or general card. It's all about trying out a new technique and experimenting with that. Um, not so much about the quotes. So I grab my quotes and I decide I'm going to use a black one. Um, in there and it says just start and I play around where I'm going to put it there is no right or wrong where it lands where you decide to put it you put it be careful putting any gel medium on top of the stabilo it will reactivate and, and cause things to get dirty didn't know where this was going to end up but I'm really happy with the end product here are the close-ups. This is what you need to do when you're faced with a blank page. Just start. Put color down, try things out, and go from there. But you will not get anywhere unless you start. I hope to see your iCADs posted in my Facebook group, All Things Mixed Media Creative Katie. See you for the next card.